Jarrell Miller says he thinks Deontay Wilder might knock Tyson Fury's head off on December 1st when they clash for Wilder's WBC World Heavyweight title. To quote Miller directly, he says, Man, I think Deontay might knock his head off. It is just based on their past fights the past couple years or a couple months. Tyson has been fighting guys we never heard of and the WBC is sanctioning the fight for a title. I think it is a little ludicrous. So those are the words of Jarrell Miller. Now, that is a good point and it's something I talked about before. How on earth has Tyson Fury managed to gain a top 10 ranking with the WBC based upon his last two fights? And I've been into this in depth before. Tyson Fury wasn't put in the top 10 of the WBC as soon as he came back. No, he wasn't. He was put in the top 10 with the WBC as soon as he started negotiating, seemingly, anyway, as soon as he started negotiating for a Wilder fight. That's when he was put in the top 10. So he wasn't put in the top 10 on the strength of him being a former champion because he's never held the WBC title. That's not why he was put in the top 10. No. Somehow the WBC, on the strength of the Pianetta fight, that's their official reasoning, as far as I'm aware. On the strength of the Pianetta fight, they've given him a top 10 ranking. That is ludicrous. There are plenty of fighters out there who have been more active than Tyson Fury, who have been fighting much better opposition than Sefa Safiri and Pianetta. But he's managed to leapfrog all of them in the rankings. That is ludicrous. Now, if you want to talk about comebacks historically in the heavyweight division, you look at Muhammad Ali. He came back and got a title shot against Joe Frazier, but not before he had to fight some serious top 10 contenders. He fought Jerry Quarry, who was a legit top 10 guy back then, at least top 15. And then he fought Oscar Bonavena, another legitimate contender. These were tough guys. These were not your Sefer Safiris or Pianettas of the world. These were much more serious operators than that. And then he got the shot against Joe Frazier. Now, I'm not trying to make out as though what the WBC have done with Fury is unprecedented. No, the WBC do all kind of funny business all the time throughout their weight divisions when it comes to their belt. Yeah, the WBC are known for doing all kinds of strange stuff. Tyson Fury is not an exception in terms of benefiting from the WBC's very odd behavior. No, he's. Uh, you know, he he's just the latest in a long line of fighters who have benefited from the WBC. Wilder himself <laughs> has benefited. I mean, Berman Stavern managed to be the mandatory challenger for the WBC heavyweight title when he fought Wilder the second time. How on earth did Stavern get into that position when he hadn't fought more than once in three years? And that was against the journeyman Derek Rossi. How in the world was Stavern mandatory challenger. Bizarre stuff. So the WBC does strange things all the time. Fury is not getting exceptional treatment, but it's just another example of how silly the WBC's uh, procedures really are. Be that as it may, in terms of what Jarrell Miller said about this fight, that he thinks Deontay Wilder might knock Tyson Fury's head off, I recently re-watched Tyson Fury versus Pianetta. And for a man coming back from what Tyson Fury has been through, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. But for a man who's about to step in the ring and fight for the world heavyweight title, it was awful. Tyson Fury was, I want to say, maybe... 40%, 30% of his old self in there against Pianetta because I also rewatched the Klitschko fight recently. 
No, not the most entertaining fight, not a fight that I'll be re-watching a whole heap of times in my life. But I did re-watch Fury Klitschko. And you look at the movement of Fury in there against Klitschko. Not just his foot movement, his upper body movement, his rhythm, his jabs. Just all round. And then you compare it to how he looked against Pianetta. People, Fury looked like he'd aged about 20 years in a space of two and a half years. Yeah, and I'm not just talking about the shape of his body, his movement, his reflexes, his body language. He looked like an old man in there against Pianetta. And you know, people are impressed by how Tyson Fury looks on the pads and all this kind of stuff. He looked great on the pads prior to the Pianetta fight. But when he got in the ring, people, if you compare him to the old Tyson Fury, he did not look great at all. Whatsoever. He looked very sluggish. Pianetta had no trouble at all. Closing the distance. Pinning Tyson Fury on the ropes. Trapping him in the corners. Now, Pianetta being pretty much a journeyman heavyweight these days with very little ambition, wasn't able to capitalize on the fact that he got Tyson Fury in certain positions. But a top 10 heavyweight would be able to capitalize on that. Which is why Tyson Fury was fighting Pianetta and not a top 10 heavyweight. Because they understood where he was at. His team understood. Fury himself understood where he was at in his rehabilitation process. That's why they didn't want nobody tougher than Pianetta. Because they understood that he could find himself in trouble if he was in there against a top 10 guy. So, <clears throat> I say all that to say this. Tyson Fury is definitely not going to be at 100% when he fights Deontay Wilder on December 1st. He's not. He's not. It's impossible. There is no way that you can go from being 100 pounds overweight, drinking drug problems, two and a half years out the ring, depression, brink of suicide, etc. There's no way you can go from that and then a year later after shedding 100 pounds and coming back against two absolute no-hopers. There's no way you can go from that in just, you know, just over a year to being back at your best. That is literally impossible. So the question is, if Tyson Fury is 60% of himself right now, which is what his brother Tommy Fury says he is, will 60% be good enough to beat Deontay Wilder? Tyson Fury's dad believes it is good enough. Tyson Fury's dad, after the Pianetta fight, was on camera in several, you know, was on camera in several interviews saying Tyson's not even back to his best, but that out there tonight was good enough to beat Wilder. That's what his dad was saying. Tyson Fury's own trainer, Ben Davison, said that he told Tyson Fury, don't take the Wilder fight right now. He wanted at least two more fights before putting Fury in there against Wilder. So, Tyson Fury's whole team, including Fury himself, who said that the version of him that fought Klitschko is gone. So his whole team are in agreement that Fury is not yet back to his best. His whole team, including himself, they all know he's not back to his best yet. But they seemingly believe, at least Fury does, <clears throat> that 60% or 70%, wherever he's at right now, will be good enough. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be good enough. I don't know. I suspect it won't be. But what I know for sure is that what he produced against Pianetta is not good enough. If he is not significantly better, and I mean at least 20% better, 15, 20%. If he's not 15, 20% better than he was against Pianetta, then as far as I'm concerned, he's got no chance at all. And he's going to get cleaned out. 
he might be able to mess Wilder around for a couple rounds in, you know, the form he was in against Pionet. We might be able to mess him around for a couple rounds, win a couple rounds. Wilder don't have great boxing skills. When Wilder's in there with a slow-footed, shorter guy, he can outbox you. But when he's in there with someone as tall as him or taller than him, who can box, Wilder doesn't even attempt to try and box with him. He just waits and waits and waits and looks for the opportunity to get the big right hand off. The one outcome which would shock me in this fight is if Deontay Wilder outboxed Tyson Fury. That is one thing I do not see happening at all. I can see Fury outboxing Wilder. I can see Wilder knocking out Fury. I could even see a scenario, although I think this is, you know, not very likely. I think it's a very outside chance that this could happen, but I could even envision a scenario where Tyson Fury maybe catches Deontay Wilder with something and stops him, although I think it's unlikely. But the one thing, <coughs> excuse me, which would genuinely shock me would be Wilder outboxing Fury. That I cannot see at all. You know, um, even a Fury who isn't at his best, I can't see Wilder outboxing him. No. Um, I could see a scenario where maybe Fury gets caught, dropped, like he was against Cunningham, and then he decides that it's too dangerous to be at long range, and maybe he puts those earmuffs on and marches forward in a similar way to, to how he did against Cunningham. And in that scenario, you might say, oh, well, Wilder was outboxing him. You know, but if Fury decides to box and stick with boxing, I can't see Wilder outboxing him at all. That would shock me. But anyway, I'm going to end this video here. It's more my musings on the fight, more my musings on what Jarrell Miller has said. I just hope that Tyson Fury is good enough and is far enough along in the rehabilitation process to at least give us a competitive fight. I would have much preferred Tyson Fury take this fight after a couple more rehabilitation fights. But it is what it is. We have what we have. As the saying goes, don't wait for the perfect moment. Take the moment and make it perfect. And that's what Tyson Fury is attempting to do. So we'll see whether he can pull it off. And once again, I have to reiterate, Given the fact that Tyson Fury is not going to be 100% in this fight, there's no way he's going to be as good as he was against Klitschko. Even if he outboxes Wilder, that's a below par Tyson Fury outboxing Wilder. Given the fact Fury's not back to his best, it puts an enormous amount of pressure on Deontay Wilder because if he were to lose to a below par Tyson Fury, that would be a massive blow, not just to Wilder's reputation, but to the reputation of American heavyweight boxing in general. But at the same time, if Fury was able to beat Wilder when Fury's not 100%, that would make Fury's achievement all the more remarkable. That would mean we have to heap extra praise on Tyson Fury for not even being 100%, but still managing to beat a reigning active, hard punching, in his prime, undefeated world heavyweight champion. Tyson Fury would need extra praise for achieving that. Let me know how you feel in the comments, people. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up 
there's no contract and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.